Welcome. Today we open the first chapter of the Deep Learning Book by Ian Goodfellow, Joshua Bengio, and Aaron Courville, a foundational text that shaped the entire modern AI revolution. In this session, you will understand what deep learning is, why it suddenly became so powerful, how it differs from earlier approaches to artificial intelligence, and why this field became the engine behind today's breakthroughs, from self-driving cars to speech recognition and creative generative models. You will also learn the core motivations that guided the authors as they wrote this monumental work, and you will gain clarity on how deep learning fits into the larger landscape of machine learning, data, optimization, and intelligence. Let's begin. Deep learning is not merely a technique. It is a paradigm shift. A new way of thinking about how machines learn patterns, representations, and concepts. To appreciate the significance of deep learning, the authors ask us to look at the world around us. We live in a universe overflowing with high-dimensional signals, images filled with millions of pixels, audio waves that fluctuate thousands of times per second, complex patterns in text, biological sequences, financial markets, and human behavior. For decades, traditional machine learning struggled to extract meaningful structure from such raw signals. Humans could do it intuitively, machines could not. And this gap, the gap between raw data and conceptual understanding, became the central riddle of AI. The authors explained that early machine learning systems relied heavily on feature engineering. This meant that humans manually designed the patterns that algorithms should look for. Imagine giving a computer a photograph and telling it, look for edges here, textures there, corners in this region, and specific color gradients over here. Engineers hand-built these rules. And while this approach achieved some success, it hit a hard limit. Humans simply cannot design enough rules to capture the complexity of real-world data. Deep learning changed this dynamic completely. Instead of forcing humans to define the features, deep learning models learn these features automatically. To understand why this matters, consider a simple everyday example. Recognizing a cat in a photograph. A baby does not learn by being told, this texture is fur, these shapes are whiskers, this curve is an ear. A baby learns by seeing thousands of examples. Deep learning mimics this process. It learns not only what a cat looks like, but also the abstract internal representations that define catness. Early layers learn basic patterns such as edges or simple curves. Middle layers combine those patterns into shapes or parts of objects. Higher layers combine everything into concepts. This hierarchical structure is the fundamental reason deep learning works so well. It is representation learning at scale. The authors emphasize that deep learning did not appear suddenly. It evolved over decades, starting with early neural networks in the 1980s and 1990s. But during that period, two limitations held the field back. Not enough data and not enough computational power. As a result, deeper networks failed to outperform simpler models. But everything changed in the mid-2000s and early 2010s. We entered an era of massive datasets, modern GPUs, distributed computing, and new training techniques. Suddenly, deeper networks were not only viable, they were superior. This transition marks the birth of modern deep learning. In this first chapter, the authors identify three key reasons why deep learning became dominant. The first is scalability. Deep learning improves as data and computation increase. Unlike many older algorithms that plateau early, neural networks keep improving as they grow. This makes them ideal for modern AI problems, where data is abundant. The second reason is representation learning, the ability to learn features directly from raw data. The third reason is end-to-end -end learning, where a system goes directly from input to output without handcrafted intermediate steps. These three principles form the backbone of deep learning success. Now let's bring this into everyday context. Imagine trying to build an AI that understands spoken language. Traditional approaches required engineers to design complex pipelines, phoneme detectors, grammar rules, signal filters, acoustic models. Every component required human expertise. Deep learning threw this pipeline away. It trained large neural networks directly on recordings of people speaking and maps them directly to text. This not only simplified the system, but dramatically improved accuracy. The same holds true for vision, translation, recommendation systems, and creativity tools. Deep learning replaced brittle pipelines with flexible learning-based architectures. 
The authors also address an important conceptual idea. Deep learning is fundamentally built on the principle of multiple levels of abstraction. Humans think hierarchically. We perceive the world by building layers of meaning, from simple sensory patterns up to complex thoughts. Deep learning mirrors this layered thinking mathematically. With enough layers, enough data, and enough compute, neural networks begin to extract structure that no human could hand design. This is why deep learning became a transformative force. It replaces human-crafted rules with powerful automatic learning. The authors also remind us that deep learning is not magic. It is an optimization process. Neural networks adjust millions, sometimes billions of parameters, to minimize a mathematical function. The power of deep learning lies not in mystical intelligence, but in the sheer scale and efficiency of these optimization routines. This is why gradient descent, backpropagation, and clever initialization strategies matter. They are the engines that make representation learning possible. Toward the end of this chapter, Goodfellow, Bengio, and Coville reflect on the broader meaning of deep learning. They argue that deep learning represents a new era in machine learning, one defined not by human-crafted logic, but by data-driven discovery. In many ways, deep learning is the closest thing we have to a general framework for artificial intelligence. It is a methodology that grows stronger as data grows richer. It adapts. It scales. It evolves with the problem. And most importantly, it captures the essential ability that defines intelligence, the ability to learn representations of the world. This introduction lays the foundation for everything that follows in the book. We now understand why deep learning matters, what problems it solves, and how it transformed the landscape of modern AI. We explored the shift from manual feature engineering to learned representations. We saw why multiple layers of abstraction unlock powerful generalizations. We learned how compute, data, and optimization converged to create today's deep learning revolution. And we recognize that deep learning is not merely a technical tool, but a conceptual shift in how we teach machines to understand the world. 900. In the next chapter, we will go deeper into the core mathematical foundations of machine learning and understand how probability, representation, and optimization come together to form the bedrock of deep learning's power. If you are enjoying this journey, through the foundations of artificial intelligence, consider subscribing so you never miss the next chapter. And as always, I am Sadi Evren Seker, sharing the core knowledge that truly matters in the age of artificial intelligence.
Thank you.